uh, thank you dr shruti for the wonderful presentation and also providing me an opportunity to present uh, in your ic and a big thanks to the aius scientific committee and the secretariat for organizing this wonderful uh, online virtual conference so uh, i'll be speaking on congenital optic disc anomalies so my screen is visible dr shruti yes sir yeah 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 thank you so now just let's touch upon the development of the eye which starts at uh, day 22 from an outpouching of the diencephalon and what we have is uh, we should remember that the pac6 is the master gene for the development of the eye and this outpouching us ultimately forms this optic stalk and this optic vesicle which goes and envelops the lens vesicle subsequently so the development of retina actually takes place from the two layers of the optic cup whereas development of the optic nerve takes place from the optic stalk which is basically the axons of the ganglion cells so if we are just to summarize the development of the optic nerve which happens around the 7th week we have the ganglion cells of the retina which develop axons which form the optic nerve that converge and exit through the optic cup uh, exit the optic cup through the optic stalk and the closure of the optic cup occurs inferiorly so the inner layer of the optic stalk encroaches on the cavity of it until the inner and the outer layer fuse inferiorly and the cavity of the optic stalk disappears so in a nutshell the optic nerve is formed by the axons of the ganglion cells covered by the meningeal layers and myelinated by the oligodendrocyte so coming to the uh, first uh, optic nerve hypoplasia it is the commonest cause of blindness in children in the western world after cerebral damage and rop usually unilateral or bilateral if it is bilateral obviously it will be asymmetric presentation risk factors include a young maternal age primary parity and first trimester intrauterine insult so what are the clinical features so we get an abnormally small we get an abnormally small optic disc the combined size of the small optic disc and the halo around it approximates the size of the normal disc the blood vessels are usually of normal caliber they might be tortuous but <clears throat> in most cases they enter or exit central we might have decreased foveal reflex and decreased retinal fiber layer thickness now coming to the double layer sign that is there so in optic nerve and hypoplasia what we have is there's a smaller optic nerve that is there is often surrounded by a whitish peripapillary ring of sclera and an outer concentric zone of a uh, ring of hypopigmentation so the outer ring is actually the normal junction between the sclera and the lamina cribrosa whereas the inner ring that is there it denotes the extension of retina rp over the lamina cribrosa then there is another interesting point called the dm by dd ratio the mean disc diameter is obviously the average of the vertical and horizontal diameters of the disc whereas the disc macular distance is the perpendicular distance between the center of the disc and the macula so a dm by dd ratio more than uh, equal to 3 we can suspect optic nerve with hypoplasia and if it is more than equal to 4 then we very likely are looking at onh the visual acuity is also associated with this dm dd ratio if you look at the histopathology when in optic nerve and hypoplasia what we have is a subnormal number of axons that are there with normal mesenchyme mesodermal elements and glial supporting tissue the signs and symptoms severe blindness uh, severe bilateral cases blindness is there in early infancy with roving eye movements or nystagmus uh, the visual acuity might range from normal to severely impaired but uh, in normal cases it usually remains stable throughout life unless associated with supracellular tumor and rapd may be present bilateral cases all we might end up getting is a sluggish light response localized visual field defects are very common in optic nerve and hypoplasia there is an entity called a superior segmental optic nerve and hypoplasia or the topless disc syndrome where we get this inferior hemifield disc like this mri in isolated optic nerve and hypoplasia we will get a reduction in the 
diameter of the optic uh, hyperplastic optic nerve here in both the sides we see that the diameter is reduced and we might also have an absent septum pellucidum uh, then there might be syndromic manifestations like we have the septo optic dysplasia which is a triad of uh, optic nerve with hyperplasia with absence of septum pellucidum and or partial or complete agenesis of corpus callosum along with pituitary dwarfism and uh, the other entity early onset periventricular leukomalacia may also be associated with optic nerve with hypoplasia coming to the next entity the morning glory disc anomaly with a congenital optic disc dysplasia in which a conical excavation of the posterior fundus includes the optic disc and it is filled with glial tissue it's usually a unilateral sporadic condition more common in females and it is called so because it resembles the morning glory disc flower pathogenesis uh, many theories but mainly it is the failure of the closure of the fetal fissure fissure and therefore it's a variant of uh, considered to be a variant of optic nerve coloboma clinical features uh, we have a funnel shaped and enlarged dysplastic disc with white tissue and retinal vessels they arise from the periphery in a spoke wheel pattern visual acuity is variable it is usually low may be associated with serous or egmatogenous retinal detachment and multiple intracranial disorders as well coming to the third entity the optic disc coloboma might be unilateral or bilateral may be associated with a pax2 mutation pathogenesis once again is the incomplete or abnormal apposition of the proximal ends of the embryonic fissure so clinically we have a typically enlarged disc with sharply demarcated focal glistening bowl shaped excavation of the optic disc Uh, it occupies the lower part of the optic disc where actually the uh, the fusion of the fissure would have occurred and the neuroretinal rim is usually absent inferiorly but is identifiable superiorly so this is how an optic disc uh, coloma would look like on fsa visual acuity would be variable minimally affected in most cases um associations might be associated with microphthalmos various other colobomas of the eye and syndrome systemic associations like the charge uh, syndrome might be there now coming to the next entity the optic nerve pit uh, it may be associated with juxta papillary serous retinal detachment and may be bilateral in 10 to 15% of cases so it's basically a herniation of the dysplastic retina into a collagen lined pocket extending posteriorly into the subarachnoid space through a defect in the lamina fibrosa so uh, basically the visual the visual acuity usually depends on the amount of serous macular detachment so this is basically an optic disc pit with serous macular detachment uh, association one third to two third present with these sort of detachments which are commoner in 20 to 40 years of age now what is important is that the fluid initially transits from the pit into the outer retina and then spreads either or both into the subretinal space or the inner retina so we might have a variety of oct findings like we might have inner retinal fluid outer retinal fluid outer uh, uh, macular hole and we might have subretinal fluid so regarding the origin of fluid there have there are various theories like it might be csa it might be lipophyte vitreous or it might be leakage from choroidal vessels treatment observation laser photocoagulation and gas tamponade with laser photocoagulation were only a tried but nowadays most uh, recent studies do indicate that the most viable treatment plan would be a ppv combined with laser photocoagulation and gas tamponade the other entity that we can talk about is the megalopapilla which is an abnormally large optic disc uh, but what is important is the visual acuity is mostly normal no vertical notching and the ganglion the rns cell thinning might be there but the ganglion cell complex thickness is always normal in megalopapilla we might also come across congenital tilted disc syndromes of the fuchs coloboma wherein the superior temporal optic disc is elevated and the inferior nasal disc is distressed posteriorly which results in an optic disc of oval appearance with its long axis obliquely oriented may be associated with the torsional disc also and field defect in uh, this is very important we do get bitemporal hemi ano uh, hemi anopia in the tilted disc syndrome which primarily involve the supratemporal quadrant but what is most important unlike clashmal lesions these do not strictly respect the vertical midline 
and repeat testing with adequate refractive correction may actually eliminate the field defect. Then there might be um, less common entities like the congenital optic disc pigmentation. Optic disc drusen uh, can be seen in up to 2% of the population, often bilateral and usually sporadic, might be buried, wherein we might confuse it with papilledema or exposed. RNFL thinning is common. And uh, what is important is uh, the diagnosis. Uh, you can do a fundus autofluorescence. You can actually do an ultrasound where in low gain settings we can pick up the calcification of the optic nerve. And the OCT, which Dr. Roy will be speaking in details, is also a very important marker to you know study the serial progression. It might be associated with a variety of diseases like retinitis pigmentosa. Complications of uh, opting out with Dusen rarer, but you might have a juxtapapillary PNVM, might have hemorrhages, the ION. Uh, then there are other entities like, uh, for example, you might have myelinated nerve fibers, you might have uh, bug mistress papillae, you might have optic disc aplasia with um, the various pigmentary changes and various degrees of aplasia of the retinal vasculature as well. Finally, my last slide uh, rehabilitation of a child visual impairment due to congenital optic nerve anomalies. This is actually very important. Optimizing visual function, correcting the refractive error at the earliest and patching if there is a myopia, working with the parents, breaking the news to them, making them understand the gravity of the situation, measuring the visual function and working within visual limits, language framework required to compensate for reduced vision should be established, low vision aids may be considered, Ensuring that impaired vision does not lead to developmental delay and, of course, provide sources of information for the parents and children. Thank you very much.